god of hellfire and I bring you fire. so that we retain most of the old. All of the and it's old. like those pictures where they say, spot the difference. Mm, because you might. You gotta stop the thing you do.
spell on you
mind, your tiny mind. No, you've really been so blind. Now's your time, burn your mind. Falling far too far behind. your crazy world you, you don't like uh, don't do you like people or don't you yes, like yes yeah i like people but like most people uh, are mad you know you like also to terrify people no well i mean it does some good you know in certain circumstances Uh, do you feel like a god or like a devil? Well, put it this way. The devil was created by the church, you know? Uh, once you've got a system, you have to oppose it with an opposite system. Like, if you propose the church is good and God is good, and you create a human god, you have to create something as its opposite to terrify people away from the things you don't like. Um, I see myself as Arthur Brown. Uh, the people who go around saying we're disgusting, it's them who's disgusting inside, you know? It's like a big sewer pipe. Their brains are like a big sewer pipe, you know? They're full of education, full of religious dogma, and they don't know what anything's about. They haven't had the feeling of what the universe is about. They're just going along in their little Volkswagens, in their cars all day, off to work, wash up, get back to bed.
The National Jazz Festival is a sort of teenager's ascot. For the 50,000 mod music lovers who crowded into Windsor at the weekend, the latest fashions were almost as important as the entertainment on stage. Not surprisingly, perhaps, because this is the year of the hippies, or flower people, whose colourful taste in costume make the miniest of miniskirts look traditional. The flower people have their own taste in music, and their favourite performers are not necessarily big names in the pop charts. For them, the highlight of this festival was a relatively unknown singer called Arthur Brown. And don't be misled by his unoriginal name. Most of the people here agreed that his act was definitely swinging. on the screen at the same time as the music going on. Paraphernalia? What do you mean by paraphernalia? All the additional stuff. This is a usual Western cynicism. What we're really doing, you see, we're not doing anything. It's the audience who's doing it. The audience is sitting out there appreciating what we may or may not be perpetrating, which may be perjury, falsehood, or any type of obscenity. And... <laughs> cease! <laughs> cease fire. Oh. Um, we are merely trying to evoke some response in the audience. I feel that uh, music, per se, on the stage is a bit dead, you know. And we're trying to introduce theatrical techniques, any technique that evokes a response, you know. Well, what sort of response? Well, um, a positive response. Or, in so no, a strong response. But, I mean, if the audience get up and start dancing, is that a good response, or...? Yeah, or if they sit there enthralled, or if they hold bottles, which they sometimes do, I must admit. Um, this isn't, for me, a good response, but at least it's a response. It, it indicates that they come up against something which is so strong, so strongly against what they're usually confronted with, that they must respond in the way which is for them the most violent, and which is, for me, the most stupid. Now you've got, already got quite a big name on occasions like festivals, this sort of thing, but you're not a, not a vast commercial success just at this time, are you? You lie! No, I'm not. No, I'm not a commercial success. I mean... Do you uh, expect to do that? Do you want to be? Well, I want to be an artist, you know, to consider myself an artist. And if the... Obviously, I mean, if I've got commercial success, it means I can do a lot more than I could do without it. I mean, I can... Um, buy up clubs, I can set up clubs that I want to do, I can get them to do what I want to do, I can get them to produce the effects, the visual effects, vocal effects, musical effects, any type of effects I want to do. And this is what I want to do eventually. And also I want to set up schools, you know, where instead of separating leisure and work, you have them both going on together. I mean, this is the whole thing now that um, the musical scene is no longer confined to music. It's, it's spreading towards where you can influence what people think, what they do, where they go, how they do what they do, etc. Is that ambition more important than getting to the top of the chart? Yeah, I mean, for the last... Before we started getting successful, we had about six months. And during that time, I was earning... I mean, one week I earned five shillings. I don't, I don't care. You know, the thing is that... If you don't believe in what you're doing, as so many of the big groups don't believe, they don't know what the hell they're doing, you might as well not do it. You know, what's the point? What did you think of the act? I thought it was really exciting. It, um, it, ha it moved you because um, it was designed to stop you just sitting in your seat. I mean, you can do that. You can stop people sitting in the seats and excite them by a very quiet sort of thing or by battering them like that act did. 
but either way, it did achieve something. Would you deny that during all your interviewing, you have not been contaminated in the slightest degree by a certain radiance of gayness? You've got Would... me worried, huh? <laughs> yes! I mean, I mean, look, I mean, it's shining on your coat! Look, it's all over you! Even no. without the ultraviolet, You're even without the lie detector, it's still it. there! A certain enjoyment, even though, look, you're smiling! Oh, look! Yeah, but that's the pure sadism. But you're enjoying it, aren't you? You're having a laugh. I mean, you see... enjoy lots of things. Like, yeah. I mean, don't you think it's beautiful, you see? We don't worry about money, but you do. Now, we're in an equal position, because we're not getting paid for it. Who you asked are. me for his wages tonight? <laughs> ah, shh, keep out of it. It's, it's like the, the ancient Bacchanales, where they gave themselves over to the experience. Never mind whether it's right or wrong. Never mind whether the church said yay or nay. Because these are old men. These are far away old men who've lost their... Uh, who've lost everything. And all they can say is yay or nay. But the young people, the young people, they may be wrong, but at yeah, least they enjoy everything. What did you think of the act? I thought it was fabulous, yeah. It was great. It was... It's so big here that you really can't like groove to it but Arthur Brown's the type of guy that no matter where he is if you dig him you can sit there and just groove you don't have to dance you don't have to sing you don't have to move you just sit there and groove to it that's just that's just the type of person he is would you call yourself a hippie or yes. Yes. do you, would you claim Arthur Brown for your own I mean do you think he's one of one of you Most definitely yes yes um, he seems to speak for the hippies. I, that last song he sang, give, him a, give Them a Flower, it's talking about the oppression that we're finding that we're getting. The sort of things that people are doing to us, the bloody-mindedness that you get. If somebody attacks you, what do you do? Give him a flower. This is what he's talking about, and this is right. Absolutely right, and this is what we're talking about. Our whole philosophy can be summed up in one word, and that's love. All you need is love. The Nice weren't the only ones combining progressive rock and stage theatrics. Singer Arthur Brown was noted for it. This was drummer Carl Palmer's first exposure to a new type of rock show. The show would start off with Arthur with this huge womb would roll out onto stage. Centre stage would be eight foot in diameter and he would come out from the middle of it with all this stretch cloth and dressed up like a boat. And it was an in incredible sight at the time. It was so far in front of everybody, you know. I am the god of hellfire and I bring you fire. Arthur's trademark was a flaming headdress which he would wear while singing his hit single, Fire. But designing it had proved to be a problem. The fire helmet was actually at that point a vegetable colander with candles on it. But that proved impossible because as the wax came down it would go through the holes and stick it to your, to your hair. So we moved on from that. The next step was to get a pastry dish with the like red piping rim, put a screw to the top of it, um, screwed it onto a leather strap, and then it went under my chin, but of course it's somewhat difficult to sing with. And also the heat would come down the screw onto my skull, so it was very, very painful. But boy, did it make a big... You're gonna burn! Of course, also, the, the lights man was given to being drunk. And he was the one who poured the... The gasoline in, so he would slop it over my shoulders. I would catch fire. I mean, it was they, people loved it. I put a spell on you. Be You do. 
spell on you
terrific.
This is a dynamic new act. We've done it so that we retain most of the old. And it's like those pictures where they say, spot the difference. Stop the thing you do
and I bring you fire. So black.